Welcome to the Panic Attack Recovery Podcast, an ongoing source of practical strategies and tips for anxiety and ADHD. We're a collaboration of former sufferers helping those currently struggling with anxiety, panic attacks, and ADHD so they can express their true competencies in life. Now, here is Matthew, your host. Today, I'm expanding on something that I have spoken about in previous podcasts, and that's hypnosis, uh, particularly um, self-hypnosis. I, I, I'm going to start by mentioning right at the outset that I'm not talking about some weird type of hypnosis, you know, where someone puts you under this spell and there's something to fear about, something to fear. But I'm talking about doing it yourself and just relaxation. Self-hypnosis really um, is akin to really just doing your own type of meditation, but it's not a complicated technique. Meditation can take, um, you know, good meditation sometimes can take, you know, much practice to get good at. But with hypnosis, you can start to reap the benefits right away and you don't have to worry over stressing over technique. I previously provided suggestions on how you could do self-hypnosis and induce the relaxation response. So I would encourage you to look back at, uh, at the newsletter and, uh, and get that information or feel free to subscribe to the newsletter and you'll you'll get that information in the uh, in the free and continuous series. So, what I really wanted to point out about hypnosis is that there are two things that I recommend. I recommend doing hypnosis to start out with panic attacks, but I also recommend even if say you expand to your own technique of say meditation once you get better at being in the moment. I would still encourage you to always integrate hypnosis with it. So it's not something that you just simply need to start out with and then never do again, but it's something that's useful throughout the day. You can get very creative with hypnosis um, because really it's all about being in the moment. So what do I mean by that is being comfortable with the present moment, even if it's just for a short period of time. The reason I say that is because if you can get used to being relaxed even for a short period of time, you can learn to bring this into your day to life, day to day life, uh, more often, and you can expand the uh, moments where you are relaxed, and you can increase the duration of these periods. So, eventually, you learn to integrate this into your day to day living, which is why hypnosis is effective because it's adaptable. The relaxation is adaptable from the hypnosis. So, what I'm talking about is, if you were to say do a daily hypnosis ritual of say ten minutes a day before you go to bed or in the morning. You could do it a couple times, um, maybe when you get up or in the evening or whenever you have a free, a free period of time. You will, of course, be relaxed while you're doing it. But also what I found in, in speaking to many others who have used hypnosis for anxiety is that they find that they learn to bring this relaxation into their other activities and to vary the activity a little bit. So, for instance, let's say that you... Um, get a lunch hour at your work and you can go for a walk. Well, you might just sit down on a park bench and um, do a variation of hypnosis. Uh, so you don't need to, if you're worried about other people looking at you and seeing you with your eyes closed, you don't need to close your eyes. You just need to sit there and recover the mindset of when you were doing the hypnosis, um, you know, earlier in the day or the evening and just recover the relaxation. Now, it's it's really hard, I'll, I'll admit, to put this into words and to explain what I mean. So it's really a matter of starting to do the hypnosis and and then learning to translate the experience. It's sort of like uh, uh, riding a bike. I, it's kind of hard to explain how to do that, but once you start doing it, um, you know, it's, it's fairly easy. Um, it comes automatically. And that's really the idea with hypnosis, too, is that you learn to use hypnosis um, automatically almost, the relaxation. So, um, again, I'm not talking about something really far out there or strange. There are particular um, hypnosis tracks that um, are very beneficial, and they um, you don't need to buy these, first of all. But I would, I would recommend, um, if you want to take it, uh, take it to the next level, if you will, of relaxation or to, to really, um, for starting out, I'd recommend... Um, I recommend considering them. There's there's only one set that I recommend in the um, in my newsletter at this time, and uh, in my opinion, they're, they're the best ones out there. And you can get more information about those um, from joining my newsletter, uh, amongst getting a lot of other uh, tips and strategies for anxiety and panic attacks. 
and agoraphobia. And I, I really hope that you do give this a try. And uh, again, I've already given a free technique for doing your own sort of self-hypnosis. Um, and I hope that you um, hope that you will take this seriously. And the last thing I'll say is like anything, if you just do it once or twice, um, you're not really going to notice a huge benefit. But done consistently over time, it can have a huge benefit. Thank you for listening to the Panic Attack Recovery Podcast. Make sure that you have subscribed to our podcast and please comment and rate us on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. All show notes and links are accessible from our website. Please visit our site and subscribe to our free newsletter at panicattackrecovery.com. All information has been provided for educational purposes. Please consult a healthcare professional about any disorder or condition and the applicability of any information provided in this podcast.